So today we got our first look at the Apple Vision Pro. This is Apple's vision for the future. And in this video, I'm gonna go over everything you need to know about this device and honestly dive a little bit into what the vision of Apple has for AR, MR, and well, VR to a degree. So this is a really interesting perspective to be taking on this as we finally get to understand what their take on this is gonna be. I mean, we have been speculating for years at this point, guessing what an Apple device would be like and exactly what that would entail for us in this VR community. Now, of course, for us lot, I mean, I'm talking about us lot speculatively, but for the community of VR people, we've been doing this for a hell of a long time at this point. But this, of course, is the first time that Apple is dipping a toe into this side of the uh, industry. So I'm very interested to talk about what they envision for the future, what the Apple Vision Pro actually does, and why this could be the headset for you or not. I mean, let alone the price tag of this thing. <laughs> Ooh, it's expensive, but still I do want to dive into this regardless of how many of these they're going to sell This still does influence what they'll be doing with the future of this tech and of course when it becomes a bit more mainstream and affordable Now to dive into the price three and a half thousand. Oh my god. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of moolah. I mean, we knew it was going to be that expensive, but man, a small part of my soul left me when I heard that price tag because I know I'm going to have to fork out and buy it. But now let's dive into some of those pros and cons. That would probably be the biggest con though. Now to dive into some of the things that this actually does, which honestly, some of this tech is kind of mind blowing and things that I thought were a little bit further off than they actually are. So FaceTime seems to be an incredibly interesting task on this. I mean, you literally take the headset off, scan your face, and it will build out an avatar, like a meta human almost, uh, where it will actually build out a lookalike of you so that when you're in FaceTime, people still get to see your face and interact with you. I mean, your face as in like a digital representation of what your face looks like. I mean, I'll be honest with you, this appeals to me in a much greater way than say, for instance, like the Facebook meta avatars currently and in their current state. Some of the other features that I thought were pretty amazing is also the pass-through of this thing. So if you're in pass-through mode, essentially what it does is have a screen on the other side as well, so that when you speak to someone, they can see your eyes. Now, I think this is really cool for a device that they're expecting you to be able to wear for productivity and throughout the day or in your household watching movie say for instance if you have a family member come in it will literally bring them into your vision which i think is phenomenal already and then on top of that they will see your eyes so the cameras will be tracking that i guess it probably works on the same way as the meta human part that i spoke about a minute ago but regardless because it can track your eyes it will be like you're looking through it talking to your family member i mean that is that's wild to be honest <laughs> i think that is wacky and wild and the future is getting here really freaking quickly. Now they spoke about the screens having 23 million pixels per eye. That's like the equivalent of shrinking down a 4K TV per eye, like a postage stamp screen that is as powerful and has as many pixels as your 4K TV per eye. That's insane. That means it should be pretty much indistinguishable. You should not be able to see a pixel when you're looking at this display. Now, one thing this does additionally while we're on that note of things is be able to take 3D videos. So you can take a video of like a memory, say for instance, at a birthday party or out with your kids or out with the family, with some loved ones, your grandparents, and actually record that moment in 3D via the headset and watch it back in 3D. That is just insane to me. And it got me really thinking about the fact of, imagine your loved ones having those memories with you and being able to revisit those memories. You know, if you were to lose someone, God forbid, but if you were able to experience those sort of moments like that in 3D and actually have that sort of genuine feeling of being there again, it would just be insane. And I think it would be one of the most precious things that you could own as obviously every day is so important to us being able to capture those moments and have them like that would be incredible in some of the sadder times in life. Now productivity in this headset, which is its main appeal, I think currently, is looking pretty promising. You can connect your MacBook to it, you can connect your phone to it, you'll be able to do all sorts of productivity tasks, bringing up things like uh, Windows Excel spreadsheets, all of those things seem absolutely perfect in it. Browsing on Safari seems like a no brainer and you'll be able to do that in there. So productivity seems pretty damn high. I've got to be honest, I'm pretty impressed with all the productivity stuff in this. Uh, it was what I was personally expecting out the headset. I wasn't expecting much more. Uh, as for games, 
gaming, we already know by this point it's really not looking that enticing for gaming. There'll be some incredible experiences in the AR side of this, but honestly, that's not really what you're going to be using this headset for. Maybe like occasionally you'll be able to play some Candy Crush on there, but it doesn't look very promising for that style of things. Now, I will say one of the things that impressed me a lot about this is the hand tracking. From what they're saying, you can really do things from a natural position, which isn't the case currently with the current tech that we have, where you can do it with very relaxed hands down by your lap. Um, really, you need to be in front of yourself so the cameras can pick up what you're doing. And the tech isn't quite there yet. So I'm very interested to see how Apple has handled it. If it is as good as they're promising, then I would be genuinely very impressed. The other side of things is because of the eye tracking, a lot of the gesture based movements are actually done with your eyes. So opening an app would be probably as, you know, just looking at something for a prolonged time. We've experienced quite a lot of eye tracking in VR already with things like the PSVR 2, showing a lot of promise when it comes to this sort of stuff. So I have a lot of high hopes for this and I just think that it's going to be an incredible way to do productivity, but not gaming. So really that's one of my main negatives with this headset is it's just not going to be gaming focused. For someone like me who loves gaming, that is a massive negative, but I can expect to use this kind of thing in a very much other way of my life. This is kind of everything but gaming um, when it comes to productivity, watching movies, FaceTiming, all of those things, it could be pretty unique. And of course, for me, as I commute for work across the world, <laughs> my actual job is based in Canada and I live in the UK. So for me, that would be an incredible personalized way to be able to talk with my colleagues at work uh, and actually be able to sort of feel you know, a little bit more location based opposed to the real world, which it is, which is I'm a million jillion miles across the world. So I love that idea of things and I could see that becoming something that would be very appealing to be able to do on a day to day basis. Now the lens stack for this looks very interesting and it's something uniquely built by them. So I don't have a lot to say about this other than it seems to be similar to pancake lenses, but with their own unique Bin. Now they looked kind of concaved when I looked at them in the images. They didn't say a busting amount about how they worked, but they did explain that the way that it works is it expands your vision to make it feel like you can look anywhere in the headset and be able to see from any corner of your eye. I mean, similarly to how any VR headset works. Again, we don't know about the range of vision that you have inside of there. All we know from what they were saying is it sounds a bit like they're saying that you're gonna have a full range of vision. Um, within a degree. I mean, honestly, I would expect it to be probably similar to maybe the Quest Pro or something like that. The other sort of pro con sort of part of this is battery life. I think they said it was about an hour long without the extended battery on there, which isn't a great deal of time, but you get an additional two hours with the battery pack. So I'm assuming you can hot swap those so that you can just continually go. Battery life is of course the biggest bane to any technology that we own currently, as we just don't have great battery technology. So we just, everything takes time. But I will say that I like the way they handled this. It has like one of those mag locks on it. So it just boop, stick it to the side of your head. Nice little light battery, tuck that in your pocket and you're good to go. Now, of course, I'm probably gonna end up buying one of these headsets because honestly, I'm part of the Apple ecosystem. I'm already too deep, man. So I can see myself doing this. And of course, with the kind of job that I do, I feel like this is gonna be a useful headset to me. I've been looking for a very solid productivity headset for a long time, and this could be the one for me. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. I don't expect many people to agree with me on the purchase of this. Honestly, I really, really don't. And that being because of the price tag of this thing and the use case scenario of this. You know, it's pretty niche. So I don't expect it to kick off much. But I will say that the vision of what they're bringing to this, I like, and honestly, I really, really think that this is an early look at the future. This is one of those things where you think like iPhones, it took a couple of years for them to really kick into becoming something that everybody owned. And I feel like this is gonna be very similar. Once they do this a couple of generations down the line and they're slimmer and more integrated into your life, like glasses size, everyone's going to own one of these. So this is kind of like a get ready for the future because AR really is going to be dominating at some point or another. And I feel like this is the beginning of that movement. So today I think a nugget of history was made and I'll be interested to see what you guys and girls think in the comments down below. Let me know, of course, your thoughts on this in the comments. And if you enjoyed this and found it helpful, a little cheeky like wouldn't go amiss. Subscribe to the channel for everything VR related, even AR, because I like to dabble. Catch you in the next one. Bye.